Okay, hi, my name is Kathy Wasica. Um, I moved here to Fresno in 1975 to take the job at Fresno City College teaching the craft program. Um, and I taught that program along with uh, s several other courses over the years, including art appreciation to and three dimensional design. Um, but it was pr primarily crafts all, the, all that time. And I retired from City College in 2012, so after 37 years of, um, of work in that program. Um, you also are an artist in your own right, that whole time you oh, yeah. practice as an artist as well, haven't you? Yeah, over, over those years I also kept up my studio uh, and studio practice. Um, although the work evolved, um, a lot over the years. Um, I work actually in two different directions and the way the studio is set up here, the back section is actually the ceramic section where I have a couple kilns and ceramic materials and my ceramic work tables are those two right there. I can show you some recent work. Um, these actually are pieces that um, are only in the first stage of things. Um, I was really interested with the, in the idea of trying to explore what happens if you pour two different kinds of paper pulp into a mold at the same time and then just let the water uh, kind of mix. Uh, and uh, let, the, uh, let the water take the pulps, the two different kinds of pulps mix. So these pieces I made, they're still like, you know, first stages of where do they go next. But um, these, these pieces grew out of that interest of trying to, uh, to combine two very different um, paper pulps. Uh, and then just allowing the, the water and the intermingling to, to create a, uh, an image, a, a, a start out image. Um, these are the, the two pulps that I was working with are cotton and um, uh, the brown one is a, a pulp made from Alstroemeria fibers. So, oh wow. You can see they look different on both sides because you've got, you know, the water just kind of um, takes the pulp in different directions. This one, this one stays clearer because um, I did some work on the mold um, that really made it possible to, uh, to have the same image in the paper at the end of the process as I had at the beginning of the process. <laughs> What's, what is the, what is the um, Alstroemeria, what's the plant that that comes from? Uh, it's, it's the one that you see all the time. It's a really good cut flower. It's called, uh, another name for it is um, African lily. Um, you would recognize it. It's really common in, in floral arrangements and uh, just because it lasts so long. And so I take the, the stems of it, I don't know if I have any here, may not. Yeah, here it is. I take the stems of it, um, chop it up, um, cook it, rinse it, and then um, beat it in that beater over there. Um, and uh, it gets to be a really beautiful pulp and one that's um, amazingly strong. So, so these are these are these are beginnings of ideas and works in in progress. I like how fluffy the um, the Alstr Alstroemeria. Alstroemeria, yeah. yeah. I love how fluffy it looks compared to the cotton. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel fluffy. It feels. You can't tell the difference actually between the two when yeah. you touch them, but it, it's got 
it's got this looser texture than the cotton. It mm -hmm. seems to, anyway. Yeah, it has more internal texture. There's not much texture with the cotton. Cotton yeah. is cotton. Um, but but fiber-wise, um, the alstomeri has much more interesting um, internal texture with, within the pulp itself. So this is how I'm starting to play with photographs in artwork. Um, let's see, which one goes, this one goes this way. And again, the, the technique was the same as you saw in these pieces I just showed you, of pouring a dark, um, a dark colored pulp personality from one end and, um, and the white cotton from another and then having them, having them intermingle. So both of these have you can see the Ulster Mary, and then on top of it, I started doing a lot of drawing. And these were all photographs I either took, um, well, it took, actually, all of these were taken in Vietnam or Cambodia, uh, these, these, these pictures here. This picture was, this was a photograph taken downtown, um, backlit of this uh, David of Sassoon. And then, yeah, embedded Lee's poem into the piece. Mm. I love the idea of using the the different the pulp personalities, as you said. Yeah, and using them to kind of create a. A starting point, right? Mm -hmm. The work that then you can paint and draw and collage on top of. On top of, yeah, yeah, yeah. and even stitch into. Yeah, know, this part up here is, is stitched onto the uh, onto that handle there. So, yeah, um, you know, it, uh, and I and I do this a lot. I'll make something like these pieces I showed you first. And they'll they'll just sit for a long time. You know, I'll have the base idea, but then where to go from there? It's oftentimes a, a process that can take, you know, a few months or up to years to to finally pull them out and go, ah, this is this is where this is going. So, um, these are these are the handmade paper pieces I've done most recently. Um, what I really have been working with primarily, though, in the last couple of years is photography. What I was showing were photographs um, from uh, uh, airplanes flying at 30,000 feet that I'd been collecting for years and years and years on trips back and forth to conferences and visit family and all. And, um, never really thought much about doing anything, except I thought that, oh, they have these wonderful designs, so I could always use them as a design in ceramic work, or I could use them in, in some paper ideas. Um, uh, that one piece that I sent you, it's uh, uh, a bunch of leaves like on a shelf. Yeah, these, these pieces came out of that first go out of working with these I was printed um, these large aerial photographs on uh, BFK Reeves paper and um, and then wetted it down and, and uh, just tore it and bent it and manipulated it uh, into these leaf shapes mostly because they kind of had a feeling uh, the landscapes um, were ephemeral, and I was trying to think of well, what else is is kind of ephemeral that you know that comes and goes, and, and so the idea of uh, printing these on paper and then turning them into leaf forms um, sort of grew out of that. So when I had this in my show, you could actually find all of the all of the photographs that that are, were turned into leaves were up on the wall in a flat form uh, in the exhibit.
Krista. No, he's just right over the fence, though. Our, our fence is right there. And he's just right on the other side of the fence. <laughs> I really like these little ones. Yeah, I like the fragments, too. They're really, they're really sweet. Do you notice your work changing at all? Or just the way you're thinking about your work changing in response to the pandemic? I know that seems sort of a really obvious question to ask, but I'm interested in how, how artists are, are kind of processing it. Not mm -hmm. necessarily that they're making work about the pandemic, but just has it changed the way you think or approach your work at all? The show happened in February, we closed down in March, and then I started finding myself thinking about old photographs and I started going through my, I have a lot of slides, most of my, a lot of stuff I used to show years, shoot years and years ago are all in slides. Um, and so I started going through my old slides because I remembered that I had a collection of new life slides that I had taken and I, I, I just started looking to see if I could find them. You know, little plants that were tiny, tiny things like desert plants that were poking up out of this super dry, parched sand, you know. And so that's, that's where my, my attention changed to was this idea of trying to capture new life and um, things, things that were very fragile and very delicate and yet, you know, poking up through this um, difficult, uh, ne not necessarily familiar environment, or, or uh, uh, friendly environment. And, um, and so that's what I've been doing ever since now. Uh, I, I haven't hardly come out here at all. I spend a lot of time I, uh, trying to work out um, macro photography and taking um, photographs of interiors of flowers as if, say, you're a bug crawling around on the inside. What's the environment you see in here? Um, and so, I, some of those photographs I sent you, that's, that's what has come out of that. So yeah, it, it really, um, I hadn't thought about those photographs that I'd taken on hiking trips when I lived in San Diego years ago, but the pandemic all of a sudden made me think new life, you know, new life in a harsh environment and, you know, what does that look like? And, and so my, my go-to um, packet of images is always plants. And so that's, that, that's what I've been really working on ever since. I love that you went from, it's still all plants, uh -huh. from working with plant fibers to yeah. thinking about the plants themselves mm -hmm. in a different way. Oh, these are, like, these are kind of fun things to, this was a plant that was just, in a, a real thin vase in the house and it died so I just left it bit by bit kind of dry out and it's just this beautiful linear drawing um, that the, that the uh, roots are doing. So I intend to do something with this and this. This stuff is lovely. This is mulberry bark, and it, if you take, um, if you strip the mark, bark off of a mulberry tree, and um, you cook it to get rid of all the non-cellulose fibers, so you just get down to the cellulose, um, and then instead of pounding it for paper makers, the next step is then you, you pound it, hand pound it, to turn it into paper pulp. But if you don't do that, and if you just take the bark and start pulling it, this is what you get. This, this is just the natural bark, just pulled apart. 
And it's, it's, to me, it's just some of the most beautiful stuff. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like, like a ribbon. Yeah, it's like it's, it's like a woven ribbon, an interesting kind of woven ribbon. And I just really, really, I just love it. And then you have to, once you do that, you have to, um, like this table here, um, you have to take the wet, once you've pulled it apart, you have to take the wet and roll it onto the table so it, the strain dries. Otherwise, it would just like that. But to get it into this nice, nice ribbon-like quality, it's just gorgeous. Yeah. This piece has gone through many, many bits of evolution. Um, this one is one of the last um, where it has these little prayers for rain. Um, they're written on uh, let's see they're written on paper that has um, ginkgo leaves. I, I'm interested in this, this idea of spirituality because <coughs> Reference it a few times. You've got the altars that you've made for these oh, yeah. for rain. Um, it seems like it's sort of a, a spirituality rooted in in the natural world. Mm -hmm. Is that fair to say? That, that's yeah, coming that through in your work. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be fair to 